Hey guys, this is Lockie, and this is the second part of my VR tutorial series. Here's what we're going to be making. You pick things up with grip, drop them with grip, and shoot using trigger. With that out of the way, let's get started. First open up your hand script, and then we're going to add a few variables. Public valve.vr dot evr button id pick up button and copy that again and then write drop button we're going to replace this with pick up button and also this with pick up button now you should open up the held object script and add another variable public bool drop on release. What we're doing is we're setting up uh, a variable that basically lets you choose whether you should drop the item when you release the, uh, the pickup button or you should drop it by pressing another button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give a, another option for this. Um, I'll just write it real quick. Hold object dot drop on release. We'll put that in parentheses so it actually groups it. Or controller dot controller dot get press down drop button and held object dot get component held object dot drop on release add an exclamation mark there to make it inverted and yeah so that makes it so that if these are both correct that means that it'll get dropped on the release of the button and if these are both correct it'll get dropped on the press of the drop button okay with that saved we're going to change a few things so select both your controllers and then choose the buttons you would like corresponding to each uh, press so i'm just going to do both as grip there's this weird bug where it displays uh, like a lot of buttons with the wrong name. I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, it's mostly the one above it, but it is actually the grip button. So, yeah. Um, next, what we'll do is we'll pick up, uh, select a item that we're going to pick up, and I'm just going to leave it so that it doesn't drop on release, which means I have to press it again to drop it, which is different from what it was last time, as it would just get dropped whenever I'd release the button. Um, so yeah, this is going to work. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add another component. We're going to call it gun, and then add it. Just for neat purposes, I'm going to drag it into scripts. And then we'll open up that component, and we'll start editing it. Uh, we're going to add a few variables first. Uh, first of all, we're going to have to choose an item that it's going to shoot out. We're going to choose a uh, power or the velocity that's going to get shot at. And we're going to choose a uh, transform that it should be shot from. Um, so with that out of the way, we're going to make it so that it... Actually, we're going to make it so that it requires a held object component. just in case you add this without adding the held object. Uh, in update, we're going to do if get, get component held object dot controller oh, sorry, dot parent dot controller um, dot get press down Um, we're also going to add a button component or variable public valve dot vr dot evr button id shoot button. We'll feed that into here, and that'll check if the uh, the controller that's holding this item gets the uh, shoot button down, which you can change to whatever you'd like. 
then it activates this. Uh, in this example, we're going to make it so that it instantiates a projectile at the fire point dot position and fire point dot rotation. We're also going to get the game object of this. And convert it to a game object and then we'll get the rigid body of it dot velocity equals uh, fire point dot forward times power so if you haven't been following me uh, what this does is it basically makes it so that it'll fire it'll, sp it'll spawn a projectile uh, at the position of the fire point that you choose and uh, at the rotation of the fire point and that will add the velocity of the fire point forward vector and then multiply it by the power which is all customizable so yeah um, now let's give that a try okay now we're going to configure the variables select the cube or whatever yours is um, we're actually going to create a projectile real quick I'm just going to make this a 3d object I'll just make it a sphere um, I'll make it the same size as the uh, other object. I'll make give it a rigid body so that it actually shoots. And then I'll put it in a new folder called prefabs. Um, you can rename to whatever you want, but I'll just leave it a sphere. Uh, select a cube, uh, drag the projectile into it. I'll just give it a power of 10 because I found it what it works. Um, then I'll add a empty object, I'll give it a Z position of 1, I'll just select it so you can see what it looks like. Um, it's basically offset to the forward uh, vector of the object by 1, so it sort of just goes in front of it. Um, that just makes it so that the projectile won't collide with this, which just makes it so it works. Um, drag the fire point to there, and then set the shoot button to whatever you want. I'm just going to use trigger so that it doesn't interfere with the other button. Um, again, it doesn't display it correctly, but it is correct. So yeah, give this a play and see how it works. So if you're following me to this point, you will have noticed that you can shoot the ball out of the cube and it'll work normally. So there's no problems there, but I'm sure you also noticed that I let a bit of an optimization error slide. So what I'll do is I'll just create a held object. Um, I'll just name it held object. And then in the initialization process, I'll just set it equal to held object component. Uh, and I'll just use that instead of that. So yeah, that'll work, and that just saved a bit of lag most likely. Now I'll also make it so that you can choose to either hold it down or press it like it currently is. So I'll do public bool automatic. Um, then I'll do public float down time and then I'll also do float time which sort of represents the current count. Um, I'll make it so that if uh, cooldown time is greater than zero um, it'll sort of subtract it but I'll also just contain this real quick so I don't have to do later. Um, so yeah, if it's greater than zero, I'll do cooldown time. Actually, no, not cooldown time. I'll do time for both because cooldown time is the value you'll set it to at maximum. Time minus equals time dot delta time. Make sure you do uh, time dot delta time with a capital T just so that it actually works. Otherwise, it'll just bring up some sort of error. So yeah, uh, it subtracts the time so this will just get lowered. At the moment, this does absolutely nothing because that's never getting set to anything else. So I'll make it so whenever you shoot, um, the uh, time equals cooldown time. So basically, whenever you shoot, it'll set the uh, time delay to the cooldown time, which you specify up in the component values. So, um, yep, I'll make it so that that basically just makes it so that you can delay the, sh the time between shots, but that doesn't make it so that you can hold it. So what I'll do is I'll make it so that... Um, just encapsulate this again. And I'll do and auto, uh, not automatic. 
for held object dot parent dot controller dot get press shoot button and automatic. So this will just check if you've chosen for it to be automatic or not and I uh, change this based on that. Um, just looking for any errors that could happen. Um, Oh yeah, it seems good. Um, yeah, so just give that a play as well. Save it real quick, just make sure it does work, and yeah, give it a play. Again, I forgot to configure the variables, so we'll select the cube, make it so it is automatic, and give it a cooldown time of 0.1. These both can be whatever you want, but just for testing purposes, we'll do this. So yeah, uh, give that a play now. Okay, so one last bug. Open up the gun script and add held object dot parent does not equal null and enclose it in parentheses. Save that and that's it for this tutorial. If at any point you've come across an error that you can't fix, feel free to download the project from the description. If you have any ideas for the next video, make sure to leave your ideas down in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video!